We can all very easily accept that we don't know everything about space, right? But what about what's right within our own solar system? With the nine planets, yes, Pluto is a planet, and the various moons and other entities within it, you'd think that we'd know just about everything we could about these things, right? Well, not exactly. Because since we can't study them fully and in depth, we have to rely on images and data from various instruments to help showcase some things for us including an image from our sister planet that is very intriguing. Allow us to show you how a NASA space probe unexpectedly glimpses the surface of Venus in stunning new first. The image. New images recorded by NASA's Parker Solar Probe have revealed the red hot glow of Venus's surface radiating through its shroud of toxic clouds. A finding that could help us better understand the minerals making up this rocky and mysterious planet. Using data from the Wide Field Imager for Parker Solo Probe Whisper instrument, scientists were able to peer beneath the planet's thick atmosphere, discovering geological features such as highlands, plateaus, and plains. Venus is the third brightest thing in the sky, but until recently, we have not had much information on what the surface looked like because our view of it is blocked by a thick atmosphere, says astrophysicist and Whisper team member Brian Wood of the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory. Now, we are finally seeing the surface in visible wavelengths for the first time from space. Although relatively close to Earth, Venus has proven very difficult to study. It's known as Earth's evil twin because, while similar to Earth in size, mass, structure, and composition, it's deeply hostile to life. Earth is temperate and wet. Venus is dry and possibly volcanic, with surface temperatures averaging 471 degrees Celsius, 880 degrees Fahrenheit. Venus's sky is filled with thick, toxic clouds that rain sulfuric acid. These features make the planet difficult to investigate up close. Landers have been sent. They kind of end up melting. And those suffocating clouds make external observations of the surface not impossible, but tricky. That's why so many have been trying to figure out how to pierce the veil, if you will, because they want to learn more about our sister planet as a whole. The New View this is where Whisper ended up surprising scientists. Last year, it took some images of Venus's night side that seemed to show surface features through the cloud layers. The images and video just blew me away, Wood said. Whisper is optimized for visible light. That is, it takes images and wavelengths that the human eye can see. But it turned out that the instrument can also see a little bit further into the near infrared part of the spectrum and visible to human eyes. Infrared and near-infrared are the wavelengths of thermal energy, in other words, heat. On Venus's day side, warm by the sun, any infrared emissions from the surface would be lost. But on the night side, it seems temperature variations on the planet's surface are unexpectedly detectable by the instrument. It's so hot that the rocky surface of Venus is visibly glowing, like a piece of iron pulled from a forge, Wood explains. Other technologies, such as radar imaging conducted by the Magellan probe in the 1990s and infrared imaging conducted by the current JAXA Akasuki probe, have given us a pretty good map of Venus's surface geology. Whisper's contribution, the researchers say, brings our understanding right to the very edge of the visible spectrum. The flyby last year revealed a region called the Aphrodite Terra, the largest highland region on the surface of the planet. It showed up as a dark smudge against the luminous clouds. This is because the Aphrodite Terra, with its higher altitude, is a lot cooler than the surrounding terrain. So, in infrared or near-infrared images of the planet, it's visible. Those images show other features too. The Tellus Regio Plateau and the Aino Planitia Plains also feature variations in altitude that makes them visible through the clouds in infrared wavelengths. Although the images haven't revealed anything new in terms of topography, the data can still help us better understand Venus because different minerals conduct and release heat differently. The emissions can be used to try to reconstruct the planet's surface mineralogy. The history of Venus. This in turn can help us understand its history. We know, for example, that Venus has been highly volcanically active in the past. Studying its surface can help us understand how widespread and how recent that activity was. Adding visible and near-infrared data to the currently available data set expands the range of wavelengths scientists can use to do this. Parker's primary objective is to explore the Sun. Its Venus observations are almost incidental. The probe is using the planet to make gravity assist maneuvers, using Venus's gravity to make velocity and course adjustments on its solar mission. It's scheduled to make seven of these maneuvers in total, 
So far, it has made five. Only two of those have been suitable for these nightside images so far. Of the two remaining gravity assists, only one will allow for more observations. The final gravity assist, scheduled for the 6th of November 2024. We'll be fascinated to see what else Whisper might find. We're thrilled with the Science Insights Parker Solar Probe has provided thus far, says physicist Nicola Fox of NASA's Heliophysics Division. Parker continues to outperform our expectations, and we're excited that these novel observations taken during our gravity assist maneuver can help advance Venus research in unexpected ways. Was Venus always like this? One of the biggest questions that have been put out about our sister planet is the question of life. For example, modeling studies have suggested that ancient Venus had big oceans and a clement climate that might have persisted for several billion years. Then, obviously, the greenhouse effect took over and roasted the planet to the point where everything boiled and life on the planet became impossible to have and sustain. However, now some people are saying that this wasn't an option at all for the planet. A study was published in October, and it said that Venus had always been too hot in order to not just have water, but to have life of any kind. Scientists led by Martin Turbitt, a postdoctoral researcher at the Geneva Astronomical Observatory in Switzerland, simulated the climate of ancient Venus using a new model. And they came up with very different results than what was put out before by others. According to them, the cloud cover on Venus during its early days was very limited. And just as bad, the ones that they did have didn't bounce away any of the sunlight that was literally beaming down on them. As such, these clouds were actually helping warm the planet. And when they did that, they helped build up the greenhouse effect to a great degree, thus ensuring the planet would roast in no time flat. If the authors are correct, Venus was always a hellhole. Astronomers James Casting and Chester Harmon said on the matter. The goal now is for the teams of astronomers to go and look at the land masses of Venus itself and determine what the true ancient climate of the place was. On our planet, such rocks form by metamorphic processes in which minerals change form without melting that occur in the presence of liquid water. Casting and Harmon wrote, If the tesserate turn out instead to be ballistic, like normal seafloor on Earth, liquid water would not have been needed to generate them, further supporting Turbot and his colleagues' hypotheses. That obviously and drastically changes the expectations of what we think is going to happen with Venus in the future, especially if scientists think of ways to try and colonize the planet. Wait, what? Colonizing Venus. Yes, you heard us correctly. There are some out there who feel that Mars isn't the best place for us to colonize, but rather Venus. While that may sound ludicrous to us here on Earth, there are people who are going full big brain to try and make it happen. From living in balloon colonies amongst the clouds of the planet to straight up terraforming Venus as a whole. It's something many are considering. How successful will it be? Who can say right now? But these images, as simple as they might be to us, might be the first of many data sets that will allow us to see what we can and can't do with Venus and thus see where our exploration and potential colonization of our sister planet goes next. So, what do you think? What do you think of this new look at Venus that our space probe got? Do you think that this could lead to not just more new looks on Venus, but to a deeper inspection of all the other planets in our solar system? What one would you really like to have a new look on? Let us know in the comments below and we'll see you next time on the channel.